Hello, yeah. Oh, hi everybody. Welcome back to PP Bike. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Sunday because when I upload, it'll be Sunday, not Friday. And it's Friday right now. But anyway, I'm back with another Zoom interview with Caroline and three hour. I don't know if you're like, how on a month is to me or not, but you could. And today we are going to be talking about cerebral <clears throat> party and how living with it in childhood. So do you might want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Caroline. I am Briella's mom, and this is my beautiful daughter, Briella. Hi. Say hi. Hi. I do. She she has her friend Poppy here, the sloth, that she loves to sleep with and take everywhere with her on her adventures. Um, but Briella is my six-year-old girl. Uh, she was born uh, six weeks early, and she was diagnosed with spastic diplegia cerebral palsy at 21 months old. And um, when she turned three, we kind of started her whole adventure of sharing her cerebral palsy story on Facebook and Instagram. One, to just really um, raise awareness for CP and prematurity and disability, but also to just connect with other amazing um, warriors, you know, out there who, you know, when, no matter what in life they're, um, you know, they're facing or challenging, uh, we can all connect together. And it's been an amazing, um, community, you know, through social media, just being able to connect with so many amazing people, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely, because I started my YouTube channel three and a half years ago, because I was, I'm in high, well, I was in high school at the time, and I, um, people were very odd around disability, and I'm completely normal, you know, mentally, but people didn't know that. And I was like, okay, well, I don't have many people to talk to. I don't have any friends, sadly. You know, I had like two really good friends. Teddy and Allie, are, if you're watching this, thank you for being my friends at the time. And I started, I started my YouTube and I thought, okay, well, nobody's going to watch this. I'm, you know, an amateur. And then it became bitter and bitter and bitter. And I thought, well, I'm not bitter now, but like, I will be. So I can start doing this for a time. And that's how I ended up doing it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we need more disability awareness. <laughs> Yes, and what you're doing through your oh, choose through the <laughs> what you're doing through your YouTube channel is is amazing, and I think I think you're completely correct. Is just really raising awareness for people with disabilities and just letting you know the whole world know like you we are all capable of greatness in life, and to never doubt anybody just because you know they're different or you know they have a disability or their race or ethnicity, and you know just to give everybody a chance and opportunities and to raise awareness for people with disabilities it's it's a huge thing, and we still have a long way to go um you know in raising accessibility rights and employment um and just you know acceptance and inclusion and it all starts with you know just us all coming together and really um you know helping through social media and in person to raise those awareness right i completely agree so my first question is and we kind of already talked about this but i'll ask it if you want to add anything else i know you are another social media in the disability community after a community Taking the money walk in her walk room with Rhyme on Instagram. Can you explain your money when starting your disability awareness page? Um, something from a, what are your hopes for the page? What is your mission or anything else you want to add? Yeah, so um, it was super exciting past week for Briella. She got to walk for um, Runway of Dreams. 
and it is an amazing uh, fashion revolution event uh, for New York Fashion Week 2020. And basically it's showcasing models with all different types of disabilities, races, ethnicities, um, walking the runway and really um, showing what inclusion and acceptance is all about, but also, um, you know, bringing awareness to that gap in the fashion industry, how we need different um, adaptability in fashion for people with disabilities to make clothing more comfortable or easier for dressing, such as, you know, snaps or Velcro um, in different ways like that. So that was a great, super um, a moment for, for Briella, you know, walking the runway this past week for New York Fashion Week. And ultimately, just through our page at Briella and Me, we are just here to help, you know, sh share awareness of cerebral palsy, all the ups and downs, um, and just the raw, real moments, you know, throughout life and just what we're going through in hopes of inspiring other, you know, families who are going through similar um you know, challenges and instances like that. And just ultimately yeah. just sharing our light, our life with, you know, everyone. And um, that, you know, even though Briella does face challenges in life, there's a lot of beauty um, and a lot of real raw, you know, truth and awareness that we need to um, share and spread light on, you know, to change the world about how people with disabilities are portrayed, you know, in society oh. and what we need to do to help them and, um, you know, just create this change for you know acceptance and advocacy and accessibility and and all of that so um yeah it's super exciting we started her page three years ago and we're almost at 20,000 followers and I've never you know just like you said you know growing your audience and um it's amazing having this community to um you know just to interact with and to share all of these moments with it's incredible definitely I I met some amazing people who doing uh doing what I do and it's amazing I DM people and you know I DM people on Instagram and it's amazing how many people answer me back and they ask me more to do interview for my channel. Um so my next question is can you explain boy our Hamble Pony Diana Mooney and how how her and what you are Damien by and by it. Yes, so um cerebral palsy mm -hmm. affects uh posture, movement, um, balance and coordination of a person's muscles, and there's four different types of cerebral palsy depending on the part of the brain that is affected. Um, and then there's also a scale from one to five, um, mild to severe, on how um, each person with cerebral palsy, you know, basically how they can function. So no two cases of CP are alike, and I think that's the most um, challenging thing you know, um, when you face a cerebral palsy diagnosis is, you know, you really have this whole team of doctors, you know, a PT, a speech therapist, a neurologist, um, a physical medicine rehabilitation doctor, an occupational therapist, a whole team um, that really just helps in, you know, her to thrive from childhood into adulthood. And um, that's basically a lot of what we've been focusing on is just getting Briella, you know, the best possible outcome in life with as much mobility um, that we can have that we can give to her and that's just kind of you know daily like what we've been doing and working on is um, a lot of physical therapy to get her you know comfortable in her walker and um, you know with using stairs and um, you know helping getting dressed and brushing her teeth so all of those things as a 24 7 you know on um, just getting her ready for life and life skills and supporting her along the way through different therapies and then as well at home and that's also what we share on at Brielle and me on our Instagram and Facebook page is a lot of you know the physical therapy stuff that we do and um, help to share that with other families who you know a lot of times we get messages for families overseas that they don't have you know the same amount of care that um, Brielle does does here in the states so us sharing those different exercises um, has been so you know helpful for all of these families who um, you know have no idea what to do you know in terms of physical therapy because they can't get to um, you know their appointments and things so um, just sharing her journey has just been incredible so Briella has spastic diplegia cerebral palsy and um, with that 
um, she has spasticity, so very tightness in her muscles, and it primarily affects her legs. Um, Briella's speech is also affected. She has dysarthria, where she has slurred speech. So a lot of physical therapy um, right now at her age, because she's six, is very crucial um, to helping her, you know, mobility and um, talking and just really just thriving in life. And that's what we've been sharing on, you know, her page and, and her journey. Yeah. Oh, if you're new here, you're more in the video from the first time. I have had this part of coming in terrible party. So, and I did a video on that. So I'll put that down here and you might want to know more about my bike with Hammond Party and stuff like that. But I definitely, one thing I do remember, and I don't remember very much from when I was younger, is a matter of PT and OT and auto therapy. I don't do it anymore because I use my theater on at home, and then I have the adaptive device that I ride, and I walk a lot. my walk. So that's how, if you might be wondering how an older person, that's a comparison for you guys, too. Um, and it's been really, it did help me a lot when I'm older now, I can do a lot of things on my own. And I do stay home alone, and I can, and I send it to things. I still need a lot of help, but I can do enough to make my, my daily life. I, when I need to, I will. And it's all about adapting from when you're young to when you're old. Yes. Yep. And if you don't know how to adapt, you can definitely find a way to, a way to adapt everything. I learned that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I learned that. I learned that. As a young child, what is the biggest challenge you face with terrible pony, or what is the biggest challenge you have seen? Uh, Briella, um, I think the biggest challenge for Briella is just mobility. Um, you know, just every single day, you know, getting from point A to point B. So from the minute she gets out of bed um, to go to the bathroom and brush her teeth to having to go downstairs and getting into a car and just really everywhere in between. Um, mobility is a huge thing that will um, always give her some challenges throughout life, um, depending on, you know, if she's using um, her adaptive stroller or a wheelchair or her, her primary um, walking aid is her walker. But still, a lot of places aren't always um, accessible for a walker or a wheelchair user. And that's kind of where we're, you know, also um, spreading awareness as well is just accessibility in all of these different, um, you know, environments. And a big one for kids is accessible playgrounds. And I know a lot more are starting to pop up, you know, throughout the United States, which is great. But, um, you know, just automatically building accessible playgrounds, you know, in every city. So every city has one um, where all the kids can, you know, play together, whether you have a disability or different challenges and mobility um, or not. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. And um, I think that's the other big thing, too, um, that we face is the the kids that do come up to Briella and they aren't taught about disability or don't know um, about disability. And I think that's very important that um, teachers and parents uh, need to explain to their children that um, being different is okay and that there are kids and adults that do live with disabilities and they all look very differently and that is okay that doesn't make you know that doesn't uh define them as a person um in any single way and that they're capable and able of greatness you know just like you and i and um i think it really starts with a lot of education with children and um you know children can be very blunt and very mean and i think as parents and teachers it, it's our job to really um teach kids about you know disabilities and how to be nice and kind and to say hello and um, we have 
a lot of great uh, disability awareness books for kids that are super helpful and is a way to really open the door for um, a conversation about that. And um, it, as a parent, it hurts me when a child comes up to Briella and says, you know, what's wrong with her legs? Or was she in a car accident? Or why can't she walk? And it's, it's heartbreaking because it's, you know, trying to, um, you know, tell that child, you know, why and, um, you know, and that's just where we need to as parents do and teachers do a, a better job at explaining disability um, to our kids and, you know, just teaching them to be kind and to say hello. And um, I think that's ultimately been our biggest struggle is just, you know, mobility and just the awareness um, that Briella does live with a disability, but that doesn't define her. She's, we're all awesome. <laughs> hey. understanding and not just you know think before they speak um, whether you know you're a child or an adult and I think that's just really important and if you don't if you don't have anything nice to say then just say hello you know just as simple as that I mean you don't need to stare you don't need to you know just say hello be kind um, yeah just you know more advocacy and awareness and I, I think that's a great video that you should do yeah, let me coming out Monday before I put this interview up. Uh, that was a video I had planned to put out before this one. So if you guys want to go watch it, it'll be right down here in the bar, the Hepson bar. And also, another thing is they need to talk to us, not the person that we are with, because if the person, if, like for me, if I couldn't talk or if they could not understand me, then my, then whoever I will with, am with will automatically come in, you know, and help me communicate. But Correct. when they talk to the person I'm with before they talk to me, I'm like, I'm standing 
right here. I'm a person. I'm a, right mm -hmm. from your face. Can you not see me standing there? Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yeah, I totally, I totally understand. Um, and that's a thing. That's something that we're gonna be facing too as she goes back to school. You know, right now she's virtually, and she goes back to school hopefully next spring. Um, and Briella, she can speak, but not everything is as clear. And that's what I'm just hoping is just that people would have, you know, be able to talk to her and have that patience, whether she's using sign language or she also has an AAC tablet to also help communicate um, as well as verbally. So yeah, I think it's very important. I think that's a great video that you should make to just kind of let everyone be aware of, you know, this is what's happening and, you know, this is how you need to interact with um, someone that has a disability, you know, and I think that's a great video to share. Um, with you had one opportunity to tell a message with other make you, what would it be? Um, I think it just, you know, to never give up and to keep going and to, you know, get connected with other amazing um, CP warriors, you know, through, you know, you know, social groups or um, on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, have those, you know, CP warrior friends and, you know, that community and that's super important. But really just our motto has just been never give up and just keep, you know, take one day at a time and keep going and, you know, write down your goals and your dreams and don't be afraid to go for it, you know? And, um, yeah. Definitely. I know for me, I, sometimes I'm terrified of trying something new. Like, because I miss them. Like, whenever I meet a new person who I want to be friends with, I tell them, hey, I have a remote party. You want me to have to help me? Like, it's gonna be on you. But if you're willing to try to do that, I'm willing to try too. So, um, like, that's a big obstacle I had to overcome when I was, when I was just starting out as a young adult. And now I now I kind of try and do whatever I can. Like I know I'm, I'm talking to one of my friends about doing horseback riding in the coming weeks. So, you should. Briella yeah. loves horseback riding, and yeah. it's so great for people with uh, cerebral palsy. Yeah, I used to do it, and then I met Benny with cool and like, and I really didn't have time because. The point was an hour away, and mm -hmm. it's really hard to, you know, take me out of school and do it because they only had a certain time spot, which happened to be in the middle of my day, and I was like, that's not in the work. But luckily, I'm out of high school now, and I do that for a living, and I met a friend who had a horse last night. So I was like, can I ride it? <gasps> yeah. So I might try and do that. That's exciting. You should. Yeah, it'll be on my Instagram if I do do that. I can't see. Yeah, I cannot bring my camera, so it will not be on my uh, YouTube channel, but it will be on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's down here on you could. <laughs> um, okay, what is your biggest piece of advice for new family party parents? Oh, um, if I could look back when Briella was first diagnosed at 21 months, um, it, it was hard. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was absolutely devastating because you just don't know, you know, what life is going to look like in the future. Um, and you're left with, you know, a diagnosis and then just so many unknown questions. And it's kind of a very scary time. You know, a doctor says, okay, um, your daughter has cerebral palsy and it's just like, okay, well now what do we, now what do we do? You know? Yeah. And, um, I grieved. I'm not going to lie. I was angry. I grieved. Um, I didn't know what to do. 
and then I started, you know, doing research and then um, just hours and hours and hours, you know, doing research and just learning everything I can about um, cerebral palsy. And that's ultimately when we started her Instagram story um, and her journey when she turned a little bit before three. And um, I think the biggest thing really that's kind of been our saving grace and has given Briella so many amazing opportunities is, start, you know, sharing her story, um, starting her page on Facebook and Instagram. And even though if you're not comfortable doing that, um, maybe just getting, you know, uh, in the local community and connecting with other special needs moms and dads and parents, um, or, you know, there's been a lot of really great cerebral palsy Facebook groups also that we're in. And I think ultimately you, we learned a lot along the way about CP and different, um, you know, treatment options and therapy things that we can do. And, um, us being able to share her story is us being able to, sh you know, share it with, everybody who is, you know, going through a, a CP diagnosis or um, any other challenges in life. And I think that's just, you know, incredible because sharing information is just, it's so valuable. And I, you know, I remember being, you know, a mom, you know, in getting her diagnosis and just feeling so lost. And I think ultimately, um, you know, connecting with others is what really has just saved, saved us all. And the opportunities that has come out of, um, come out of it as well. It's been incredible for Briella and our family. And um, we're incredibly thankful and grateful for the whole community um, that we've kind of, you know, been a part of on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it has education has helped me. The more people I meet, the more I learn about my own and disability and my and I'm like, wow, I did not know that mm -hmm. in, in the community. So I'm very happy I'm here too. So yeah. Um as parents, what do you hope the world know about Boy Hour and other micro as he grow up? Um, I mean, I would love for people to to know about Briella. Um, really, that just her diagnosis does not define her um, or who she is as a person. And yes, yeah, she has cerebral palsy. Um, and yes, you know the the way she does things may be a little bit slower, a little bit different. And that's okay. You know, um, we are all different. We all do you know things at different paces. Um, you know, in life, and that's okay. And I think you know. Um, we're all capable and able of greatness and, you know, um, people with disabilities need to be included and accepted, you know, in school and, um, you know, just the world and, you know, in work environments and just, you know, everywhere. And, you know, as a, a society, we still have um, a long way to go and just making more accessibility and opportunities um, for people with disabilities and, you um, and that's kind of why we've been sharing, you know, her story, just really to raise awareness of, of it all and, um, you know, the advocacy for it. And, you know, people with disabilities need to be seen and represented. And, um, you know, we've been a great part of, you know, helping to do that now in the fashion industry with Runway of Dreams and um, just a lot of the different opportunities that Briella has had. And I think ultimately just be kind, um, you know, help, be caring, and just, you know, help advocate because, you know, at one point, you know, one of us, or I can, you know, be a person with a disability, you know, and um, I think ultimately that's just, you know, important just to, just to have that awareness. Right, because anybody, anybody can be um, disabled at any point of their life, rather you have an injury or rather um, you are old and rely on another person. So I think if we all were to have the advocacy in us, that would really help us as a person mm. become a more inclusive place for everyone. Yeah. And yeah. have to in you, you must just find a way to bring it out. So anyway, thank you so much for being on my panel. And if you might want to follow Briella and me on Instagram, I will put it down in the description and I recommend you do both follow them. 
and I will also put other help videos that are on my channel down there. So, if you like this video, make a thumbs up. If you're new here, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel and comment down below. I don't know, comment whatever you want to comment. I love reading your comments. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, you people. I'm in a hot week. Morning here.